the, the, the quality in which they, they go better in, in, in the natural ones. And we can do the simulation, but first remember that we have to put to have some assumptions of our model. And there are four rules in this uh, setting. So the first rule is that a cell uh, with this than to a giant cell, you die. Uh, so imagine that if you have only one cell and there are no other cells in the neighborhood, then this cell will die. The second rule is that a cell with, with more than to be a giant cell also die. And that because and that due to uh, overcrowding. Okay? The third rule is reproduction. So if you have an empty space with more than to be a giant cell, you come uh, you come alive due to the due to reproduction. Yeah. And the last rule is uh, a cell with exactly two adjoining cells in the same. Okay. So let's go back to to this uh, slide. So um, I've, so from those four simple rules that we apply to this system, we think uh, the pain will go better than it be. Anyone? So anyone, anyone guesses that pain B will be go better than A? <laughs> okay. I'm just thinking because uh, there's only one rule that causes cells to die, right? which is the over. No, no. The, there are two rules, right? That causes cells to die, which is the loneliness and the overcrowding. Yes. So, uh, I will let the simulation proceed and you will see that one of them will completely uh, will be completely dead. It could be uh, one after some time in the head of the other and it reverses of this thing. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> so let's do the simulation so that we can visualize what happens. Okay. Okay, so now plate is completely gone. <laughs> and the, the quality plate uh, keeps going and uh, expanding. So I just want to point out the first, I guess the what one, uh, one of the advantages of doing modern simulation is that we can really visualize what happens, what is going on in our in our system based on the assumptions that we have. No. <laughs> okay, another example. So let's say we have 200 people in this room, okay? and I set the room on fire. So, and as soon as we have only one emergency access, which, which is the, the front door over here, and so everybody will follow the same rule, that is everyone from the current position, you go straight to the exit, okay? But you also want to avoid to collide, to, uh, to be pushed or to push one another, okay? And there are two, two settings here. So in the first room, I just leave the room empty like this. But the second room, I put, say, I put a gas in front of the exit, okay? So, Intuitively, you would think that if you have something in front of the, the axis, that would slow down your slow, slow down the flow of the escape, right? But I will show you that from simulation, you will see something different.
wants to survive. <laughs> I guess I will show you at the end of my talk. <laughs> so basically you will see that in this, in the first group, uh, without the obstruction in front of the, the axis, people tend to get caught at the axis, and that is slow down the flow of the axis. But if you put something in front of the axis, then it will allow uh, people here to, to, to exit faster it is getting students out from, uh, from the simulation. So the second, I guess, the second advantage of using simulation and modeling is, is that we, we can, from the consequences of the simulation, we can predict or give some insight of the, the real system that sometimes might be uh, counterintuitive. Okay. So now I'm going to move to the problem that I'm interested in, which is the organization of the organizational structure of hash. So if you look uh, inside the amino pass or code pass, you can see these uh, granules. This one is this one is again the identified microscope. And if you open this granule, like the cross section of this granule, you will see the pattern of the gold ring inside the granule. Okay. And if we zoom in into these layers of the gold ring, you, you will see the athletic pattern of light and dark layers. And if you even look closer into this uh, athletic pattern, you will see that it is due to the the structure, the pattern of the, um, of the molecule, which is the myopathic molecules. So this is uh, another uh, figure of the ash structure. So we have, a, so if we look at, at the cross section of the, the gallery, we will see this athletic pattern between the dark, uh, dark and light layers. And, and this is actually the, the, the structure of the myopathic molecule. And you can see that this molecule can be uh, has two different distinct regions. If you look at this layer, you will see that most of the molecules are in the linear form. Okay? And this corresponds to what they call history lambda. And another region is the the, the section that has highly bunched points, which is called uh, amorphous lambda. Okay. So this group is, is basically is just the athletic pattern between crystalline uh, and amorphous lambda. Okay. 